Hello again, wrestling fans, and welcome to another edition of This Week in History. We're going to look at the week of July 2nd to July 8th. My name is Sean, coming to you from London, Ontario, Canada, and thank you for joining us on your Thursday lunchtime for our trip through this rich, rich history of our great sport. Thank you for joining us on YouTube or Facebook. And also audio-wise on Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere else you get your podcasts from. We are part of the Ontario Independent Podcasting Network here in Ontario and the Johnners Podcasting Network in the United Kingdom. We definitely uh, appreciate your support and would like you to reach out to us at any time, whether emailing us at scumbagswrestling at gmail.com, hitting up our website, scumbagswrestling.com, ca or of course easiest thing to get us is on facebook where it's so quick to get your response we want your feedback hit us up and find out how you can also support steven's wrestling journey steven spice 10 year old little guy has curie malformation and if you buy one of our t-shirts from pro wrestling tees backslash scumbags wrestling we're going to donate the money at from those purchases uh, all month of July to Stephen and his charity, which you can also look up with the hashtag Stephen's Hearts for Kiri. They also need Toronto Kid, Sick Kids Hospital, and you can find out more about Stephen's story. Stephen also joined us uh, last month, or sorry, May, uh, for one of our podcasts, and you can find out all about Stephen and his uh, quest there. So, Hit that up, help out Stephen and the Curie Malformation research. And before we dig deeper, can't forget that we're sponsored by CoolBet. Stay cool, bet responsibly. Go to their website where you can do gaming tables or bet on sports. They also support us with the Scumbex Wrestling Predictions League. And this month, uh, we will have back-to-back -back shows on the 17th and 18th with Impact Wrestling and WD Money in the Bank. So Slammiversary and Money in the Bank coming up. If you're part of the Predictions League, get your thoughts ready because it's a double-shot weekend on the 17th and 18th. So now that that's taken care of, we need to venture all over to Niagara Falls and bring in Jonesy. How are you this afternoon, Jonesy? You mean I have homework to do this weekend? I, I, I got to pick winners and losers. No, that's still one more week away. Oh, one week ago? Oh, good. I can procrastinate. You still have a little bit more time, and I'll be sending out the lists of everything, and you go to our predictions page, and the, the lists are right there, and even little graphics to show you the matchups that are happening uh, so you can get a visual of who's against who and ideas that way. But, uh, yeah, uh, watch out for emails and uh, text messages uh, if you're part of the league happening on probably uh, about the 16th. Uh, the card for uh, Impact <coughs> be uh, together, and by the 17th, the card for uh, Money in the Bank should be uh, together. So you get two different emails uh, next weekend involving the Predictions League. But we're here for uh, history. We How are we here for history. All right, so I'm going to move you over to the side. Sounds good. We are going to be doing the week of a July 2nd to the 8th. So we're going to be taking in some uh, July 4th weekend. Uh, thank you uh, and happy 4th of July to our American friends and hope the uh, Canadian friends enjoyed last weekend with uh, Canada. Absolutely. All right, here we go, July 2nd. Only going back 20 years ago. WWF presented the first WCW match since it shut down back in March on Raw is War from Tacoma, Washington. In what was the show's main event, Booker T defeated Buff Bagwell via DQ to retain the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. The match received many boos and chants of boring, and this match sucks. As both Booker and Buff were already out of gas short into the match, the match received huge cheers uh, when heels at the time, Austin and Angle, would beat down Booker T. This would be Bagwell's only match on Raw, as he would be fired one week later. Yeah, definitely not in uh, any ring shape. Uh, Booker, thankfully, was able to still impress. But I think uh, 
I heard also that Buff came in with a little bit of an attitude. Um, Arn Anderson was also on commentary for that match. And I'm trying to remember who his uh, commentary partner was. I can't think of his name at the moment. But, uh, yeah, they uh, surprisingly closed out the show. And it was sort of a little bit of a tease uh, as they were trying to hold the WCW name into recognition still while trying to line up all their ducks and figure out how Rob would have one show or WD would have one show, uh, probably was going to be SmackDown, and Rob was going to turn into Nitro. And that was the original uh, thought. And then with the fact that all the other billionaires or millionaires that were uh, employed by WD, I mean, WCW uh, were still collecting paychecks from Turner by being able to sit at home and just check their mailbox for their next paycheck and not have to do anything and heal up, the, the invasion and uh, subsequent rebirth of WCW was non-existent because the top stars were not there and people knew that and weren't ready to accept it. Yeah, if they really wanted it to continue, I think they should have just waited for a year or two. They could have had a couple guys coming over, but don't advertise it as a WCW takeover because I think if they waited, they could have done it. Oh, exactly, because within that year, you did have people like Goldberg, uh, I think, was uh, freeing up. We eventually did see in 2002 was um, the NWO, so less than a year after uh, WCW mm -hmm. went down because that was March uh, 17th of 2001 that it uh, closed up and by February at no way out, the uh, NWO was being brought in there. So as you said, if you, they'd waited a year and just done maybe sneaky little things here and there, brought in some people from WCW without naming them as WCW guys, and then do the big angle of we were here all along and uh -huh. right under your nose, it, it would have yep, made I, a bigger impact. I really think they should have, of course, you go, you can always go what they should have done, but uh, um, with, uh, I'm kind of losing my thought now. Anyways, we're going to get back to this, but that is a great discussion point uh, of uh, what they could have done better. Anyways, 19 years ago at a SmackDown taping in Boston, Edge and Hulk Hogan defeated Billy and Chuck to win the WWE Tag Team Championship. Uh, this is the first time Edge wins the tag belts with someone other than Christian as his partner. As for Hogan, it's his one and only tag team title in his four-decade career. Fifteen years ago, RVD and Sabu were pulled over by police for speeding, and they found some party supplies in the car and were arrested and posted bond. Uh-oh, RVD is the WWE champ and the ECW champ. We'll, uh, champ, sorry, not chant. Uh, we'll continue this story shortly. 14 years ago on Raw from Dallas, Texas, Umanga defeated Santino Morella to win the, WC, uh, uh, the WWE Intercontinental Championship. Seven years ago, Tennille Dashwood, best known to WWE and NXT fans as Emma, was fired, then rehired. This all came about as she allegedly shoplifted an iPad case from a Walmart. After WWE announced the release of Emma, fans pointed out that other WWE superstars Cameron and Jack Swagger had recent DUIs but were not fired. So WWE reinstated Emma. Yeah, and I think they found out later on that it was just a mistake of uh, possibly she thought that the item was p uh, purchased and was put in her bag and it wasn't checked in or something like that. It was some sort of uh, cashier error, potentially, uh, I think was the uh, issue. Ah. Uh, and so they were able to rectify that and she uh, was hired back, but she's currently over at Impact Wrestling. You know, and I, I, I think how many times I've walked out of a store with something I haven't paid for. Uh, and I've never been chased. Uh, I've always come back, well, except that one time when I was a kid, but uh, I, I've done that. You grab a big milk, and then you forget to pay for it, and you just walk out the door, and then you go, oh, shit, and you go back. Um, for me, so. that's just me and my father. 
It's a happy 48th birthday to Scott Ronald Garland, a.k.a. Worm Master Scotty Too Hottie. Garland would start his career as a ring crew member at age 16 while still in high school. He would primarily work as a jobber in the WWF in October of 91 as Scott Taylor. He would first sign a full-time deal with WWF in their new lightweight heavy division at first, then began tagging with Brian Christopher in early 1998. Uh, Scott D. Too Hotty Taylor, or sorry, I guess I said that wrong. Scott Too Hot Taylor and Too Sexy Brian Christopher became too much in summer of 99. Too much would defeat Edge and Christian for the WWF tag titles. They would later be joined by Rikishi. Garland would hold the WWF Light Heavyweight Championship in April of 2000. But the team's biggest success came just when Too Cool defeated Edge and Christian for the WWF Tag Team Championship on Memorial Day. After recovering from an injury, he would win the tag belt again, this time with Rikishi from the Bastion Brothers. Garland would make sporadic appearances on WWE programming and traveled the indie circuit. Garland would become a firefighter and emergency medical technician in 2013, returned to the WWE as a trainer for their performance center in September of 2016, and Garland has two children. Yeah, he was actually a subject of one of the recently released uh, writers uh, that WWE had. She was a comedy writer, and she actually boasted uh, publicly that uh, she had no knowledge of wrestling and made fun of the fact that uh, she didn't know that the current champion was Bobby Lashley. She, it could have been Bobby Ashley or anything. She didn't know, didn't care. And then she heard about Scotty Too Hottie and hearing that name and that she's like, oh, I'm glad I didn't know anything about him because I'd hate to lose to that guy. <laughs> and just, yeah, she mocked uh, Scotty and just... Yeah, you wonder why she got fired by making uh, statements like that. Wow. July 3rd, 35 years ago in Australia, Velvet McIntyre defeated the fabulous Moolah to win the WWF Women's Championship and would hold it for an astonishing six days as she'd cop the belt back to Moolah. Yeah, just That's a lot of hair, up. man. That's a lot of hair. It is. And probably a lot of hairspray. Yeah. It, it's, it's going on there. You know, I look at I, I that'd be kind of a fun thing. You know how they do makeovers and all that. Take that uh, uh, velvet lady and dress her up like they would nowadays. Like do her hair and everything. Would she look like like would she fit in? Because you just look at that and you're like, wow, that's the body type is different. Everything's different going on. Yeah. Well, the thing is that we're doing swimsuits only, and you know. Obviously, mm -hmm. pantyhose and your wrestling boots, but compared to what the ladies dress like today, totally different, as you were pointing out. Uh, you want to go back uh, to... Uh, oh, did July, I miss something? Yeah, July 2nd, there's a happy 57th birthday to oh. Little Nate. Little Nate, uh, former WCW and current WWE referee Charles Shane Robinson. Uh, little Nate called this because he looks a little bit like Ric Flair, started refing in 95 and joined WCW in 99. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been around for a long time. He He's one of my favorite referees to watch. Um, uh, the, the, I think that uh, he took the... Um, I'm trying to think. Anyways... I lost the name of the ref I liked over him in WCW, but... Um, oh, you mean uh, uh, Nick Patrick? Curtis. Mark Curtis, actually. Oh, I like Mark Curtis. Hildebrand. Yeah, he, yes. unfortunately, he unfortunately passed away. Uh, yes, got little he was Nate so here. animated in that ring. Yeah, little Nate, he uh, actually dressed like Nature Boy during the uh, really dumb era of WCW where he was actually wrestling and doing the whole thing. And the guy doesn't seem to ever age. Like, he's got Dick Clark syndrome uh, or something, but he's still with WWE. And uh, yeah. you know what? I'd, I'd agree with you until the last few years because that picture right there, I mean, if you get close ups of, of him, he looks pretty, he looks pretty rough there. Yeah. Just when you don't see him up close. Mm -hmm. I, mem I remember that when I seen, um, 
it's not a wrestler, but uh, when I seen Penn and Teller, when I met uh, um, uh, Teller, he's old. And you can really tell when, when you when you uh, are close to him. Uh, camera is very nice to him, kind of like him. On camera, he looks pretty good, but get too close, you see age. But and compared to Ric Flair, he still looks a hell of a lot younger. Yeah. All right, and we're moving on, I believe. Final birth or other birthday is 50, uh, 50 oh, yeah. month birthday to Baracus, who lasted like three days in WWE. Yes, I completely skipped that. Happy 49th. His real name is Ochim Elbrook. I don't know, something like that. That's why they named him Brockus. Moving on to July 3rd. 35 years ago in Australia. I think I already did that one. Yep. 30 years ago in the, um, East Rutherford, um, New Jersey, WCW held its first ever event since Ric Flair was fired from the company. An announcement by Gary Capetta to the crowd of Flair being stripped of the belt drew a lot of booze. In the evening's main event, El Gigante, Lex Luger, Sting, and the Yellow Dog defeated Barry Windham, Kevin Sullivan, Nikita Koloff, and one main gang in a War Games match. This actually, I when I was looking for the pictures, couldn't find a really good picture of that War Games because it was basically a house show in yes. New Jersey. And somebody actually loaded up three matches. It's like an hour and 37 minutes on youtube handheld camera and i think it's to the guy and his buddy doing commentary for it mind you uh i skipped through a lot of it just trying to find a picture that would work but it's a uh, mm -hmm. probably a classic rca hand camera that was a jumbo thing at the time with a vhs uh tape in there but uh yeah if you can sit through an hour and 37 minutes of a shaky camera you get uh there's a, a six-man tag, there's a tag team match, and then this war games, at least on those uh, in that uh, clip. So check it out on uh, YouTube. Yes, uh, some people can uh, record things on camera, you, uh, and other people, like myself, we are too damn shaky, and oh my God. 23 years ago at a WWF Superstars taping in Ocean City, Maryland, Bret Hart defeated Bob Backlund to retain the WWF Championship. After the match, Backlund uh, shook Bret Hart's hand, then attacked him, applying the cross-faced chicken wing on Hart. He went berserk. It took several referees to peel Backlund off, but uh, Bob Backlund heel? It worked. Before Hogan went bad, Backlund did it, and damn, was he good at it. The event, at least that's my opinion, uh, the event would also be the last Joey Morella, uh, last match Joey, Joey Morella would ref. He would die in a fatal uh, auto accident following the taping. Uh, his last match ref was between the 123 Kid and Jeff Jarrett. 20 years ago at a SmackDown taping, Billy Kidman defeated Sugar Shane Helms to win the WWF Cruiserweight Championship. This would uh, mark the first time a WCW champ would change a uh, championship would change hands on WWF programming. Very nice. Two good 19 guys. years ago at a NWA TNA weekly pay-per-view taping, AJ Styles and Jerry Lynn defeated the Rainbow Express, Lenny and Bruce, to win the NWA World Tag Team Belts. Fifteen years ago, RVD continued his bad week. That night on Raw, he would lose his WWE Championship in a triple threat match to John Cena. Story to be continued. <laughs> Twelve years ago in San Diego, California, Edge suffers a serious ankle injury uh, during a match with Jeff Hardy. It turned out to be a torn Achilles tendon. The Big Show would replace Edge as tag team champ with Jericho to become a Jerry, Sh Jerry Show? Jericho. Jericho. Okay, that, that, was, that sounds better. 11 years ago at uh, UFC 116 in Las Vegas, Nevada, Brock Lesnar uh, defeated Shane uh, Carvin via submission in the second round to become the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion. At least a guy that was successful going from uh, 
WWE to uh, UFC, unlike unfortunately CM Punk. Yeah, I think I think CM Punk, uh, uh, if he, I mean, he could still do something, but it, 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 he would have to fight older people. I think now, um, but you know, I give it to CM Punk. He he's a tough bugger. He got he got the shit kicked out of him, but uh, he totally you know, agree. He got his ear cauliflowered really bad. And oh yeah. But you know what? I give it to him. He just because he didn't win didn't mean it wasn't a win for for him. He went into like that's a tough world, man. I actually remember uh, Brock Lesnar seeing one of Brock Lesnar's first UFC fights, and a uh, former colleague of ours uh, was having birthday, and we went to a uh, strip club in Niagara Falls. Well, I think you were still at a hotel or something, and while. Yes. Uh, while Brock was coming out, the girls were trying to get us to pay for some uh, entertainment from them. And it was just like, yeah, well, I see you over there uh, entertaining and uh, doing uh, that for uh, the table over there. I will get to you in a little bit. But Brock Lesnar's coming out, and it was at like the LA Forum or something like that, uh, his first uh, match. And then after that, we uh, continued... Uh, with our time at the gentleman. sometimes I do wish we could talk more about uh, than just wrestling because uh, bringing up strip clubs and how to get rid of them ladies that constantly bug you. Whew. Anyways, nine years ago, WWE presented the Great American Bash on a live episode of SmackDown from Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, Layla and the Great Kali defeated Oksana and Antonio Cesaro. Hacksaw Jim Duggan defeated uh, Slaughter, and Santino Morella uh, defeated Unico Camacho and Drew McIntyre. Zack Ryder won a 20-man over-the-top battle royal to earn general manager duties for the following week's SmackDown. Woohoo! Woo! And today would have been the 56th birthday of Japanese wrestling legend Shinya Hashimoto. I like saying that one. Hashimoto, uh, he was born and raised in Toki City, uh, Gifu, Japan. Hashimoto began training at the New Japan Pro Wrestling Dojo. Five months later, the 19-year-old Hashimoto uh, debuted against Tash Tashushoshi uh, Gato. He would wrestle around the world for four years in Japan, the United States, CWA, uh, Canada forced uh, Canada for Stampede Wrestling, or should be just Canada Stampede Wrestling, anyways, and World Wrestling Council in P Puerto Rico. While in Puerto Rico, he would form a Tokan Shanjushi, the Three Musketeers, with former fellow trainee classmates Ch uh, Mashiro Chono and Kenji Moto Muta. Uh, the Musketeers cemented themselves as the future of New Japan as the top uh, three scorers in the 91 G1 Climax event. In 93, Hashimoto defeated the Great Muda to win the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. He'd hold it for seven months, drop it, and regain and hold it for another year before Muda reclaimed the belt. Hashimoto would hold the belt one more time. In 2000, he founded Pro Wrestling Zero One. In February 2003, Hashimoto defeated the Great Muda for the All Japan uh, Triple Crown Heavyweight Championship, joining Muda as the only um, man to hold the NWA All Japan and New Japan Heavyweight titles. On the morning of July 11, 2005, Hashimoto suffered a brain aneurysm and died. He was only 40 years old. Doctors believed high blood pressure and other stresses led to his death. Post humorously, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling retired the second version of the IWGP Heavyweight Championship belt. He had a son that made his wrestling debut in 2011. He is the Tokyo Sports 94 Wrestler of the Year, was inducted into the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame in 2000, and posthumously inducted into the NWA in New Japan Pro Wrestling Halls of Fame in 2010. Yeah, very uh, accomplished uh, career, unfortunately cut short at uh, just 40 years old. But uh, yeah, at least uh, a lot of people uh, found a way of honoring him 
uh, with, of course, Dave Meltzer, who just loves uh, Japanese mm -hmm. wrestling. And, of course, uh, then where he actually did perform uh, for New Japan uh, and the NWA Halls of Fame. So it's unfortunate that he did pass away, but he was well honored for his mm -hmm. accomplishments. 35 years ago in Texas, Chris Adams defeated Rick Rude to win the World Class Championship Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship. 34 years ago in Atlanta, Georgia, JCP presented the Great American Bash. The debut of the War Games would take place, created by Dusty Rhodes and inspired perhaps by Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. War, Ga War Games is two rings side by side and a cage that encloses the ring. Uh, then two teams of four or five would have a multi-period match that would only end when all participants are in the ring and someone submits. Rules would be altered over the years. Uh, there are no pinfalls, countouts, or DQs in this bout. The main yeah. event was... Sorry? Actually, uh, War Games uh, 87 was probably one of the first uh, uh, tastes of the NWA that I ever had because... Um, I'm not sure remember who it was, uh, but there was a friend of mine who ended up uh, recording two uh, VHS tapes for me. One had WrestleManias one through three on it, and then the other one had uh, War Games uh, or the Great American Bash tour, and I had two uh, things of War Games on it. And I've always loved uh, that concept. Of course, they could have had a little bit higher of a cage because it made it hard for uh, Road Warriors to do. Uh, the doomsday device and stuff like that off of, but yeah, I've always uh, definitely loved uh, the concept. The one time they had JJ Dillon in there, and he broke his collarbone or something like that, uh, and got replaced by another guy. Uh, Paul Ellering was uh, another man for the uh, superpowers team, but when it was five on five, but yeah, love war games. Mm hmm. Uh, of course, in this one, it was the superpowers, uh, and they defeated the four horsemen. 31 years ago, Keith Frank, a.k.a. adorable Adrian Adonis, is one of three people killed in a single car accident in Lewis Port, Newfoundland, Canada, after the car of four people went into a lake after avoiding a moose. The driver who claimed to be blinded by the sun was the only survivor. The driver's brother was one of the dead. At age 33, he would be survived by his wife and two daughters. 31 years ago, Ed Leslie takes a pair of sail to the face. Poor Brutus the Barber Beefcake suffered serious facial injuries that took eight steel plates, more than 40 screws, and 100 plus staples to repair his face. B. Brian Blair is credited for saving Brutus's life. Brutus would miss his WWF IC uh, chance as he'd miss that year's SummerSlam where it was planned for him to win. Now you imagine that would have been caught if we had cell phones way back then. That would be on YouTube right now. Oh, for sure. And how uh, his face exploded and all the steel plates put in there. And then, yeah, uh, and if you look at his career, is kind of wonky with his uh, different characters because he was like a cousin to Hulk Hogan as uh, Ed Boulder and whatever uh, was going on there. He's always uh, been riding uh, basically Hogan's coattails, unfortunately. Uh, then, of course, his beefcake, he got in there in the WWE. Uh, teaming with Greg Valentine, split off with Valentine to WrestleMania 3, became the barber. T should have won the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania 4, uh, going against Hockey, but didn't. And then we got up to SummerSlam, where he should have uh, won it, and this parasailing accident happened. But then, was it just before WrestleMania 6, uh, he came back around and was wearing a mask and a barbecue grill on him. And it was uh, going after Earthquake. And it was like never identified of who it was. Made like two or three appearances on uh, Superstars and Wrestling Challenge. And then gone. Then they finally brought him back in 93. And they were uh, all concerned about his face. And using a mask, to, titanium mask to protect him. Which he didn't need, clearly. Because they got rid of that. And he... Did a little bit of uh, wrestling. Went over to WCW when Hogan left. 
and did the whole butcher and zodiac the booty man the man with no name the disciple yeah i, I liked bruce bar beefcake uh, everything else no <laughs> you know if i had to choose other than him being brutus zodiac because the face paint and just the get up it was funny well, um, actually, it was kind of ironic that he did uh, do that uh, Zodiac character because if you go to, I think it's Suburban Commando, uh, the Hogan movie, uh, it starts off with some sort of wrestling thing, and he's Zodiac there, but this was years before oh, Zodiac maybe that's why. Was, was even a thing. Well, right? that's kind of cool. And so that happened in that movie, and you see that or uh, uh, the nanny one, one of the two. Uh, but yeah, I think it was actually the nanny one, but still he uh, appeared there. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, good guy. He seems he just got into the hall of fame. And I think I just recently saw that his wife is, uh, wanting people to, uh, keep him in their thoughts and prayers because he's not doing so well right now. So I know Conrad Thompson and all them, uh, make fun of him and call Brut him Brutus, the fucking barber beefcake, because they can't believe that beefcake was the one who got to take out Mr. Perfect's perfect uh, record at WrestleMania. Well, you know what? I, I, he was a very popular at that time. What? Like, Brutus the Barber, I'm like, yeah, he's not the greatest wrestler, but back then... He had it all. He I liked him. I, I loved his entrance. I thought his entrance was fantastic. The, the, he had one of the best ring gear outfits of all time. Grenade uh, going off in your closet, yeah. He was great with facial expressions and that. So, I mean, he was definitely better than a lot that had been there. So, oh, yeah. uh, but I, you know what? I really doubt that he actually, that that was titanium that he had in his face, yes. But outside, for that to be molded and all that, that would have been yeah. like, thousands titanium in, is not cheap back in 93 yeah yeah Apparently you can yeah. fool me you can fool me with many things but not that yeah oh right so after that 28 years ago aboard uss intrepid in new york city lex luger would be the first in the wwf to body slam the 500 pound wwf champion yokozuna this was the beginning of an all-American babyface Luger that would lead to the Lex Express and SummerSlam's big match between the two. And yeah. you know what? I don't think I don't think they do this shit enough. They need to do more neat stuff like this. Having it, you know, like it's unique. Having it on a battleship—that's just amazing. It was uh, bloody hot. If you ask any of them uh, there, because of the way the uh, carrier is. It's basically uh, tarmac and yeah. metal and everything. And the sun beating down in the uh, New York Harbor at that time just was excruciatingly hot. But the interesting part was they had different stars from football, hockey, uh, WD, obviously, going to try and slam Yokozuna. But he just stood there and they tried to lift him. It was only when Luger got him moving did uh, this hip toss or body slam actually yeah. happen? Uh, as I'm saying uh, hip toss like Coronet was uh, protesting it, as it being. Uh, but yeah, really great uh, thing. They d ditched the whole narcissist uh, gimmick that he was doing uh, up until WrestleMania. And well, actually even uh, I think as far as uh, uh, King of the Ring, uh, that happened it, the month before he was still the narcissist and then Hogan took off. So they needed a new, uh, person to wave the flag and he was almost being built up as the next Hogan. And so they had him come in on the helicopter as a last great hope because they didn't know who it was. And he brushed off Bobby Heenan and uh, solidified himself as a face, got his bus, made it all the way to Auburn Hills and failed, but celebrated with balloons in the palace yes and and you know again it's a good thing that back then the audio wasn't as good as it is nowadays because i'm sure you would have heard a big squish as uh, uh he as a uh, luger was grabbing him and trying to turn him over the amount of sweat that must have been in, <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, well, considering uh, Yoko had been out there, Rodney had been there for a long while before Lex had shown up. Because oh, yeah, a lot of, lot of through... guys was a lot of guys was uh, grabbing his uh, 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 nether regions, trying to left, left them over there. So. WD actually is going to be doing a Icons um, documentary, and it's, they're going to include Luger, of all people, uh, coming up very shortly. And so it'll be nice to see what they actually say if they are honest about this whole uh, Lex Express and uh, what changed things uh, from being set up so easily and clearly that people would be like, oh, yeah, he's going to win. Uh, they even had him uh, before the uh, SummerSlam event coming out with the uh, title, stealing it from Yoko and cutting a promo and then giving it back uh, afterwards to Jim Cornette and all this other stuff. But people were just like, oh, my God. And they were teasing it. And, of course, you put a guy on a bus and send him across the country, one would think this is a no-brainer. You're telegraphing the fact that he's going to win the damn title at SummerSlam and left everybody scratching their head going, what? But I think also uh, something came out that he did a radio interview and yeah, said that ah, I'm going to be winning the title. And instead of putting it in context of I'm going to go there to win the title, they were just like, ah, you blew it. We're going to pull the swerve because you just gave away the ending. So, like I said, the Icons uh, paper and uh, documentary coming out on uh, WD Network will be interested to see if they cover that. And the other part that needs to be covered is the uh, night and uh, the morning of uh, Miss Elizabeth's death because WD did a whole confidential uh, program when it happened and did not paint uh, Lex in the brightest of light obviously reasons for that, mind you, but we'll see how they uh, paint, paint the picture in 2021. Mm -hmm. 27 years ago, WWF referee Joey Morella is killed after falling asleep at the wheel on the New Jersey Turnpike while traveling from a WWF Superstars taping in Ocean City, Maryland. He was 31. Bruno, Bruno Lawler, a, or Lawler, a.k.a. Harvey Wimpleman, uh, was also in the car and survived. Harvey was wearing a seatbelt while Morella was not. Gorilla Monsoon was Morella's adopted father. 21 years ago at a SmackDown taping, Val Venus defeated Rikishi to win the WWF IC belt. Oh, my phone's going off. Awesome. 16 years ago on Raw from California, Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels defeated Kurt Angle and Carlito. After the match, Michaels would turn heel and sweet chin music the Hulk. Yeah, <laughs> and that subsequent match at SummerSlam 2005 was one of the worst cases of overselling ever in the history of wrestling, I'd say. Uh, but I think Sean was, unfortunately, we knew Sean was a better person going forward from uh, what he was uh, when he first left in 98 and coming back in 2002, but business being business and Hogan uh, refusing to wanting to put Sean over in what was supposed to be a two or three event between the two uh one putting each other over at first and then one of them getting the rubber match uh along the way i guess somehow it got said that hogan was not going to put sean over on a second uh bout and so because that was said sean decided to oversell at SummerSlam, and the bouncing going on is just utterly ridiculous but well worth the watch yeah, mind you, he's not the only one that has over-exaggerated many moves. Oh, The Rock uh, getting stunned by Austin is another top one. <laughs> 21 years ago at a SmackDown taping, Val Venus defeated Rikishi. I don't think I'm on the right one, am I? Two more, Dan. Oh, two more. I already did that one. Okay, sorry. 15 years, do. 15 years ago on ECW, uh, on Sci-Fi from Philly, The Big Show defeated Rob Van Dam in an Extreme Rules match to win the ECW World Championship. 
After all that, RVD was suspended for a month and never got back to where he was post-incident. Uh, Big Show would be the only person to hold the WWF, WCW, and ECW World Championships. Yeah, it's kind of a shame uh, with what happened with Rob, uh, with that whole thing. Uh, of course, this was 15 years ago, 2006, where weed was still considered a, oh my God, don't touch it, it's the devil's herb, and all this other uh, stuff, and highly illegal, but if it was in 2021 in Canada or various states in the uh, United States that have legalized it, it would have been a different story. But when your uh, main champion gets pulled over by the police with, uh, a, a, at that time, deemed illegal drug, and you're a publicly traded company, that was a bad choice uh, for them to do that. Uh, again, speeding to be pulled over. And of course, being public traded, you had to quickly get the titles off them. And that's why Monday and Tuesday he dropped the belts. The uh, downside, I think, to that whole thing also is the fact that ECW was being relaunched with Rob as being the flag bearer. Whether he held the WWE Championship for much longer would have been a different story, but he was definitely going to hold the, uh, the ECW title and get that rolling again. But because of what happened, I think the direction of what ECW was going to be drastically also changed into just another WWE product instead of being a rehash or rebirth uh, of the original ECW. And it's all a shame because of that being pulled over. All right. Six years ago, WWE presented the Beast in the East from Sumo Hall in Tokyo, Japan. This is believed to be the first aired live show from Japan for the WWE. Nikki Bella defeated Paige and Tamina in a triple threat match to retain the WWE Divas Championship. Brock Lesnar defeated Kofi Kingston. This was Lesnar's first non-pay-per-view uh, bout since 2004. Finn Balor defeated Kevin Owens to win the NXT Championship, and John Zena and Dolph Ziggler defeated Kane and King Barrett. Yeah, I think for some reason it was, if I remember right, because I was at uh, uh, my in-laws' uh, house that weekend visiting, I was getting up at like 5.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning just to be able to watch this uh, because of the time difference between uh, Canada and uh, Japan. But you are dedicated, sir. It was worth getting up for. I, I, I don't, I don't think I've ever got up early to watch a program. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, um, the Labor Day uh, big uh, spectacular that uh, they used to do. Um, uh, Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. But besides I'd that, I'd stay up for that. Yeah, I mean, we do that too. Hey, it's a happy 61st birthday to a former horseman, Barry Clinton Wyndham, the son of Blackjack Mulligan. He is a former WWF tag team belt holder with his brother-in-law, Mike Rotunda, as the U.S. Express, and former almost every belt in the NWA and WCW holder, which includes the NWA World Heavyweight Championship in 93. Wyndham was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2012 as part of the Four Horsemen. July, uh, July 5th, 106 years ago in Omaha, Nebraska, Joe Stretcher defeated uh, Charlie Cutler to win the World Heavyweight Championship. And that's Stetcher, I should say, no R in there, Stetcher. 21 years ago in Georgia, the Miracle Violence Connection, Terry Gordy and Steve Williams, defeated the Steiner Brothers to win the WCW World Tag Team Championship. And Brad Armstrong defeated Scotty uh, Flamingo to win the WCW Light Heavyweight Championship. Armstrong would be the last light heavyweight champ as he was stripped of the title due to a knee injury and the title was abandoned just under a year after its creation. 22 years ago, WCW presented Nitro. In the show's main event, WCW World Heavyweight Champion Kevin Nash defeated Sid Vicious via DQ. 
Also, Scott Steiner is stripped of the WCW United States Championship and is awarded to David Flair. Goldberg would return. This was the last wrestling event at the Georgia Dome until WrestleMania 27. Uh, attendance at the Dome was just 25000 with only 19000 plus paying. Uh, the show also featured a performance by Megadeth. But Nitro was no match to Raw, as Raw got 6.2 to 3.3 in the TV ratings. Raw had The Rock defeat Triple H in the Steel Cage in the Hardys' first WWF tag title win. 19 years ago, Triple A presented Triple Mania 10 from Mexico. One luchador was unmasked, Mascara Melgina, and two heads got shaved as Menjico and referee Al Terroritas both lost their hair. 12 years hair ago, in, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. I love hair versus mask matches. Yes. There's, there's a lot of them in Mexico. 12 years ago in Tokyo, Japan, Apollo 55, um, Ryu, Ryu, there you go, Ryu Suke, uh, Taguchi, and Prince DeWitt Witt defeated the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin, to win the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship. Look at those friggin' outfits. Well, we have that with Space Monkey, except for yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. You're right. I I thought of Space Monkey, but I didn't, I didn't drop that. Yeah, and the one on the left hand side of this picture is Finn Balor. Oh yeah, neat. Nine years ago, Kenny King would make his TNA debut in an attempt to rebuild the X Division. However, King at the time was one half of the tag champs in ROH. RH was not happy with King's appearance and would be fired. New Japan, oh, six years ago, New Japan uh, Wrestling presented Dominion 7.5 from Osaka Castle Hall in Osaka, Japan. Uh, Kushida defeated Kenny Omega to win the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Bullet Club, Doc Gallows, and Carl Anderson defeated the Kingdom, Matt Tavin and Michael Bennett to win the IWGP Tag Team Championship. Hiroshi Tanahashi defeated Toro Ayano, and Okada defeated AJ Styles to win the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. I noticed you uh, bravely skipped over. Uh, I Okada's did because fight. it's it's one of those because I don't say them often enough, and there's so many to say. And plus, my brain sometimes when I see a certain uh, forming of letters, I want to say. Because a lot of these guys have similar names or, you know, their gimmick. So I want to say a, um, a certain one over what's written there. So sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, that Kaz Kazushika or Kazuyushika. I, I don't know what the hell. Anyways, happy 32nd birthday to Austin Jenkins, a.k.a. Adam Cole. Cole, Earl, Cole is a former two-time ROH World and TV champ and NXT champ. He was listed at uh, number two on PWI's top 500 in 2020. And it's the boyfriend of current uh, AEW women's champion, Britt Baker. Dr. Oh. Britt Baker. 36 years ago in Baltimore, Tito Santana defeated Greg Valentine in a steel cage match to win the WWF Intercontinental Championship and was the first title changed in a WWF steel cage. 36 years ago, the NWA held the first ever Great American Mash uh, from Charlotte, North Carolina. Jimmy Valiant defeated Paul Jones in a dog collar match. Uh, we saw a uh, Crusher Khrushchev and Ivan Koloff and the Road Warriors uh, fought to a double DQ in a NWA and AWA World Tag Team Championship unification match. Dusty Rhodes defeated Tully Blanchard in a steel cage match to win the NWA World Television Championship. With the win, Rhodes gained the services of Baby Doll for 30 days. 28 years ago, WWF held a Superstars of Wrestling taping. Uh, the TV taping had the debuts of Ludwig Borga and the Quebecers, as well as Well Done. 
an interesting uh, arraignment of debuts on that one show. Uh, well done. 24 years ago, WWF presented In Your House 16 Canadian Stampede from the Saddle Dome in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, this would be the last two hour In Your House as they would add an hour for future shows. And this card was voted best card of 97 by Dave Meltzer. Mankind okay. and Hunter Hearst. Sorry, go ahead. Something I might actually agree with Dave Meltzer on for a change. Oh. But of course, Dave Meltzer's opinions are basically a wrestling fan's opinions. He just gets well, a lot of it is also not just his opinion, it's his readers. Yes. Mankind and Hunter Hearst Helmsley fought in a double uh, countdown. The great Suzuki defeated Taka Mishinoku in the WWF debut for both men. The Undertaker defeated Vader to retain the WWF championship. The uh, Hart Foundation, Brett Owen, uh, Jim Neidhart, Davey Boy Smith, and Brian Pillman defeated Team USA, Steve Austin, Ken Shamrock, Goldust, and the Legion of Doom. Yeah, that was definitely an interesting uh, time in WWE where if you were Canadian, you were a hero in Canada and a villain in the States. And if you were a hero in the States and you went to Canada, you were then a villain over there. And uh, it was definitely unique uh, to be able to allow the talent to pull that and flip that switch instead of being on autopilot going, well, I'm a fan favorite everywhere so that you have to accept me as i am but they they were all able to flip that switch and play the roles that uh, were needed uh for that you know and uh yeah definitely a unique time and then of course because it was in calgary and the stampede and all this uh event that was being held by wde magically diana uh smith was miss stampede that year well, she is beautiful. Or Mrs. Stampede. I'd vote for her. 23 years ago, WCW presented Monday Nitro from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. 41,000 plus were in attendance with only 30,000 tickets sold. That's still not too bad, 30,000 tickets sold. This Nitro would score a ratings uh, win for Nitro for the first time in nine weeks, moving this scheduled dark match of Hogan versus Goldberg to the main event for Nitro was a ratings win, but cost WCW a lot of money not having it as a main event on a pay-per-view. Uh, Booker T defeated uh, Dean Malenko to retain the WCW World Television Championship. Chris Jericho defeated Ultimo Dragon via DQ to retain the WCW World Cruiserweight Championship. Goldberg defeated Scott Hall to retain the WCW United States Heavyweight Championship. And Goldberg defeated Hollywood Hogan to win the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, some people might think doing double duty is a taxing thing, but when it's Goldberg, you're basically got 20 minutes of entry and five minutes of action. Yep. Between two matches. <laughs> 17 years ago at a SmackDown taping in Winnipeg, Manitoba, uh, Billy Kidman and Paul London defeated the Dudley Boys to win the WWE Tag Team Championship. In the show's featured bout, John Zena defeated Booker T via DQ. After the match, Cena would attack Reigns and SmackDown jam Kurt Angle. Then Luther Reigns uh, would uh, attack Cena. Angle would strip Cena of the U.S. belt for Cena's attack. Today would have been the 107th birthday of Vincent James McMahon Sr., which, of course, is Vinny's pop. Moving on to July 7th. 44 years ago in Canada, Greg Gagne and Jim Brunzel defeated Blackjack uh, Lanza and Bobby Duncan to win the AWA World Tag Team Championship. No favoritism there with the son of the promoter getting the title. Not at all. None. 31 years ago, WCW presented the Great American Bash. This was the last Great American Bash under the NWA name. We saw Doom, which was Ron Simmons and Butch Reed, defeat the Rock and Roll Express. 
to retain the NWA World Tag Team Championship. Big Van Vader, in his WCW debut, defeated Tom Zink. The Midnight Express, Dennis Caudry and Stan Lane, defeated the Southern Boys, Tracy Smothers and Steve Armstrong, to retain the NWA United States Tag Team Championship. And Sting defeated Ric Flair to win the NWA World Heavyweight Belt. Another WCW event presented 25 years ago, Bash at the Beach 96. John Tenta defeated Big Bubba Rogers in a Carson City uh, Silver Dollar match. Uh, it, that was a terrible match. It really was. Yeah. Uh, the Nasty Boys, Jerry Sags and Brian Knobs defeated. You know what? We don't even have to go through the card. We'll get to the, the, the meat here. The uh, the Outsiders. Oh, yeah. Ric Flair did defeat Conan to win the WCW uh, United States uh, Championship. The Outsiders, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, and their mystery partner fought Team WCW, Randy Savage, Stink, and Lex Luger to a no contest. Near the end of the match, Hulk Hogan would come down to seemingly help Team WCW. Of course, we got one of the best heel turns in history. Then we'd have Mean Gene interview Hogan in the center of the ring. Hogan would spit on WCW and his Hulkamaniacs and declare themselves the new world order. Uh, this heel turn would, of course, change the um, course of Monday uh, night the Monday Night Wars. Uh, what do you have to add to this? We've talked about this many times, and so many yeah. things happened during this event. The the garbage in the ring. Um, yeah, I'm uh, actually finally getting to catch up on uh, some 83 weeks with uh, Eric Bischoff. For a variety of reasons, Stitcher wasn't uploading him, and I noticed that they had some uh, newer shows because of the 25th anniversary of uh, this event. And so I'm catching up on it right now, but uh, listening to uh, one that has uh, them talking to Scott Hall uh, with his debut and leading to this. Uh, but I did see a clip also on the uh, 83 Weeks show involving this. And even though he pitched uh, the idea for Hogan to be the third man, he uh, Eric Bischoff was still not confident that Hogan was actually going to go out there and do it. Because as much as he knows Hulk Hogan uh, business-wise and personally, he also knew the business side of him that people would have been whispering in his ear and saying, no, this is going to be a death of uh, your uh, career if you do this. Don't do it. Don't do it. And there was stupid rumors that Mabel was going to be the third man, which obviously wasn't. Uh, Sting was considered to be a third man. Uh, and... Uh, they didn't pull that trigger and they had it be Hogan but with Hogan coming out there and doing it, it was actually a huge success and revitalized the career that a lot of people had actually turned their back on Hogan yep. and were booing him like he, he'd outworn his welcome in WWE and even going to WCW did not totally revive his career people got tired of him quickly, it was like oh Hogan's here, yay uh, Okay, we've seen enough of this <laughs> And especially when he was always going against Ric Flair or bringing in former WWE guys because he trusted them and knew them from WWE. You know, you can't... Hogan, the way he was, didn't trust anybody he, he hadn't worked with before. And so that's why you saw people like John Tenta being brought in, him going against Beefcake and all these other guys that he knew. But this was a total different venture going and teaming up with Hall and Nash. And... It made sense, but didn't make sense at the same time. I don't know how much Bobby Heenan knew, but, of course, he already hated Hogan anyways, but he almost gave away the fact that Hogan was going to turn because when Hogan's coming down, uh, Tony Schiavone and Dusty Rhodes are like, oh, my God, thankfully he's coming because uh, Luger had been taken out on a stretcher or something like that, and so it was down to Savage and Sting. Uh, being there, and the third man for Hall and Nash hadn't shown up, and they thought, oh, Hogan's going to come and save the day and um, even I mean, be on our side because we're down a man, being WCW, and then Bobby's like, yes, but whose side is he on? And I was like, what the... And I think some broadcasts actually took that out 
uh, but it's back in uh, now on WD Network. But uh, briefly, it was removed. I think WCW did it. Uh, and then, of course, the leg drop and then joining up with Holland Nash and uh, yelling at Mean Gene, threatening him. And you got the quote of what Tony Schiavone ends up saying at the end as it goes off the air, if you want to finish off this segment. Yeah, as they went off the air, uh, the uh, uh, um, Tony Schiavone said, all right, we, ha uh, we have seen the end of Hulkamania for Bobby the Brain Heenan, for Dusty Rhodes, for Mean Gene Okerlin. I don't know. I'm Tony Schiavone. Hulk Hogan, you can go to hell. We're out of here straight to hell. Uh, of course, he said it a little differently than I did um, as far as you know, emphasizing things, but I, I really, um, that was hilarious, the way he he it's ended up in hell. Yeah, if he did, totally didn't know, it was a really good improv uh, for that, uh, regardless of his... Uh, no you know what? I, I don't understand. A lot of people don't like Tony Schiavone as an announcer. I, I really liked him as an announcer. I still do. Um, mind you, I don't listen, uh, watch him on AEW, but um, I've always liked his uh, voice and his delivery. Tony has a way of putting you to sleep. You, you just curl up in bed and listen to some old WCW or even current AEW, and you can drift off to the deltones of Tony Schiavone. No, see, I, 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 I got to say, know. I'm fighting that and saying I disagree with that. Um, I Sometimes, yes, as far as Saturday night, between him and Dusty sometimes. But you know what? I I I liked him. He, I didn't find him boring at all. And oh, he, he is so good at selling crap. It's just, it's great. He just had one of those voices that just help you ease off to bed. It's almost like a uh, one of those ASM whatever uh, videos. Just... And ease off to sleep. All so right. Well, well, we uh, send each other evil texts about um, uh, the fact that he doesn't like Tony Schiavone. Uh, Twenty-three years ago, I know, I know. Twenty-three years ago on Raw's War from Canada, Owen Hart and the British Bulldog defeated D'Lo Brown and Farouk via countout to win the number one contenders tournament for the WWF Tag Team Championship. 18 years ago on Raw from Montreal, Quebec, uh, Booker T defeated Christian to win the WWE IC belt. July 8th, this is the last day, 36 years ago in Foxborough, Massachusetts, Don Morocco defeated the Iron Sheik to win the first ever WWF King of the Ring tournament. Yeah, before it was ever an actual pay-per-view. Yes, 30 years ago at a wrestling a challenge taping in Canada, Sid Udi, Sid Justice, uh, makes his WWF in-ring debut with a win over Ted DiBiase. It was not softball season, I guess. No, I guess not. 25 years ago on Nitro, I got to ask, why do you, why, why, I, I don't get that comment. I was just playing her along. Uh, a lot of times that Sid would disappear for a little while or come up lame with an injury coincided with softball season, and he'd go home and play some softball yeah. with the, whatever local team was in Memphis. Huh. Or was sorry, sorry, in Arkansas. Well, that would have been kind of cool to see him play baseball. I would have loved to see him freaking run down a ball. That'd be hilarious. Oh, yeah. His son actually uh, was on uh, Big Brother a few years ago. Yes. 25 years ago on Nitro from, Dis the, from the Disney MGM Studios in Lake uh, Buena Vista, Florida, Rey Mysterio defeated Dean Malenko to win the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. And here's a shocking announcement on this next one. Yupper. 19 years ago on Raw from Philly, Kevin Nash would tear his left quadricep in his first match back since a torn bicep injury weeks earlier in the year. Nash would trip over Booker T's foot following a big boot, landing awkwardly on his left leg. He would be out for another eight months, thus ending the NWA, NWO reboot experiment. 
Also on the show, Trish Stratus and Bradshaw defeated Jackie Gaeta and Christopher Nowinski. Jackie Gaeta would miss a few steps in this match. And Jeff Hardy defeated William Regal to become the last WWE European champion. The belt would be retired and unified with the IC belt two weeks later. And finally, nine years ago, TNA uh, presented Destination X from the Impact Zone. This was a one-night tournament for the X Division title after Austin Aries gave up the title for a chance to win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Zima Ion defeated Mason Andrews, Kenny King, and Sonjay Dutt in an Ultimate X match to win the vacated TNA X Division Championship. According to the rules, Zima could have cashed in his newly won belt for a TNA world title shot, but he did not. Samoa Joe defeated Kurt Angle in a Bound for Glory series match. AJ Styles defeated Christopher Daniels in the last man standing match. And Austin Aries defeated Bobby Roode to win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Right. And of course, this week in wrestling history is compiled from the vast land of Google, Wikipedia, CagesideSeats.com, and most importantly, from fans and journalists that had front row seats to history. And a big thank you to our sponsor, CoolBet, CoolBet.com, and sports book betting and casino games. Stay cool, bet responsibly. Excellent. Yes, once again, as always, thanking. Cool bet who helped us with our shows and sponsoring our championship belt for the Scumbags Prediction League. Uh, so this concludes another edition of the uh, This Week in History show. Hopefully you enjoyed your lunch hour while uh, listening to us and following along with our trip down memory lane through the rich history of our great sport, as Tony Giovanni would always say. That's where I got that line from. And so See, we you to like play. Tony, of course. I listened <laughs> to uh, what happened, yeah. What happened when, uh, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so thank you for uh, being a part of this, uh, Chris. And we'll uh, bring up some more next Thursday, 12 noon, on all your uh, podcast uh, listening stations, uh, along with YouTube and Facebook. I'll be there, brother. Have a good one.